Hello lords and ladies. Hello and welcome. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play, this time of another of my top rated games, Mount and Blade Warband. More specifically, this time we're gonna play on the Gekko Kujo mod. Now for those of you who might not know what Mountain Blade is all about, Mountain Blade is, in essence, a medieval simulation. At least in the vanilla version. You are an... Adventurer, who finds himself in a war-torn land where lords are battling for land, fame and supremacy with the ultimate goal of becoming the sole ruler of the land. There are once again many different ways of playing this game. I seriously love these open sandbox titles. You can go from city to city, making your riches with opening enterprises and trading, helping your selected faction win by doing them favors, training men for them, or anything such as that. You can Another way of playing the game is that you can become a retainer in another lord's faction and fight for his name and see him rise to the top of the leadership ladder in the land. Or you can do what most players do, which is grow strong enough, accumulate enough fame and legitimacy and announce yourself a king in your own right. After which, let the land-wide conquering begin. With all that said though, without further ado, let's hit start a new game and see where this takes us. You will pay, pay pie, half wages to your troops while you are staying in a town or a castle. Similarly, you will pay half wages to troops you garrison in a castle. That is always good to know because some of the troops here, like... When you get the troops to their maximum level, they can be very, very expensive. So only paying half wages definitely worth knowing. Initializing map. Now, the reason that the map is initializing for this long is simply that this mod is massive. You're gonna see what I mean when we actually get onto the quote-unquote world map. It is basically a map of Japan, of course. Um, you're gonna see what I mean by massive, they're, like, it is very, very big, <laughs> let's put it like that. Uh, here we go. Welcome adventurer to Gekko Kujo. Before beginning the game, you must create your character. Remember that in the Sen Sengoku era, war and politics are usually dominated by male members of the nobility. That does not, however, mean that you should not choose to play a female character or one who is not of noble birth. Male nobles may, may have a somewhat easier start, but women and commoners can attain all of the same goals, in fact, in, in, and in fact may have a much more interesting, if more challenging, early game. Select your character's gender. Um, not that I have anything against females or anything of the sort, don't get me wrong guys, but I just have a general idea of what I want to do here, and that general idea has me going a male character. You were born years ago, in the land of the rising sun. Your father was. Now, I think we're gonna make our father... A... What I like about this game, like, not about this game, but the title in on itself, Gekko Kujo, literally means those below overthrowing those above. And in that spirit, I think we're just gonna go something as low as possible, not exactly a thief, okay, not as low as possible, but we are going to go either an Ashigaru, Ashigaru, or a Hunter. Uh, now, an Ashigaru, just uh, so you know, it's basically a uh, peasant footman. That's basically it. If you can imagine a Roman legion with its auxiliaries on the side, those auxiliaries were usually of peasant birth, and this is basically the exact same thing. We're just gonna go with Hunter. You were born the son of a family who lived off the woods doing whatever they needed to make ends meet. 
hunting, woodcutting, making arrows, even a spot of poaching whenever things got tight. Winter was never a good time for your family as the cold took animals and people alike. But you always lived to see another dawn, through your, though your brothers and sisters might not be so fortunate. You started to learn about the world almost as soon as you could walk and talk. You spent your early life as... Now I believe we're just gonna going to continue the spirit of what I said earlier, so let's start somewhere low. Definitely not a Damio's attendant then. Um, let's just say that we were a mountain child. As a boy growing out of childhood, you lived deep in the mountains, surviving away from civilization. Although often hungry, you became a skillful hunter and pathfinder in this trackless country. Your body too started to harden with muscle as you endured your rough life. Then, as a young adult, life changed as it always does. You became... Now, what did we become after that? Like, I believe that once we actually attained uh, adulthood, we probably wouldn't have, have wanted to actually continue the poaching game, so we're not gonna go a game poacher in the mountains. Maybe we actually came to the city you know, and actually started living off of civilizations, seeing what some of the things they offer us are. Now, I'm not sure if an armed retainer necessarily means that we were a samurai, but considering we were a hunter, and then a mountain child, and it literally says that we lived a rough life, that our bodies have hardened, that basically we have good archery, which is what samurai actually did have. I think that we're just gonna go as an armed retainer in the provinces. Basically, we let ourselves become military men in one of the provinces. I don't think it necessarily means we became a samurai, but just one of their many retaining fighters. Though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way you be had become a man, and the whole world seemed to change around you. When you were taken under a daimyo's banner, you practiced long hours with weapons, learning how to deal out hard knocks and how to take them too. You were instructed in your obligations to your lord and of your duties to those who might one day be your vassals. But in addition to learning the Bushido ideal, you also learn about the less uplifting side. Old warrior stories of ruthless power politics, of betrayals and usurpations, of men who used gill as well as valor to achieve their aims. Okay, so apparently we did become basically a samurai, considering it literally says one day be your vassals. So maybe that wasn't the best way to go if we wanted to continue the story the way we started it. Very sorry about that. But soon, everything changed, and you decided to strike out on your own as an adventurer. What made you take this decision was... Okay, now let's see, what made us take this decision? Personal revenge. So something happened to us, and we just wanted revenge and followed the person to a war-torn land. The loss of a loved one. Now, considering we're relatively young, I don't think we should actually take this one. Wanderlust. So, we just heard all of these different stories and we decided to take them on ourselves. Being forced out of your home or lust for money and power. Now, even though I believe that in the end game we are going to go for the... What I believe is the most fun ending, which is... Well, you become a king or in our case a shogun yourself and just go conquer the whole land, get lords to join you. Like, I find that kind of diplomacy and uh, military, um, military actions quite pleasing. <laughs> so we are, even though, like even considering that, I don't think we're gonna go for lust for money and power. We're not exactly gonna lust for it. But, I believe that being forced out of your home, basically, the way I imagine it, we did something wrong, or simply our lord died, somebody came to us and told us, get the hell out of here, you're not wanted here anymore. So, being forced out of your home, I believe, is the best way for somebody to strike out as an adventurer. Basically, you have no other choice. <laughs> so, being forced out of your home. 
Only you know exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. However, you know you cannot go back. There's nothing to go back to. Whatever home you may have had is gone now and you must face the fact that you're out in the wide, wide world, alone to sink or swim. And we're gonna make sure we swim. Become an adventurer and ride to your destiny. Here we go. What will this game saving policy be? Realistic, no quitting without saving, or allow me to quit without saving. Now, usually, guys, usually I do play this on realistic. Like, I've never used the uh, save function. But what I am worried about is what if this game suddenly crashes? Sometimes the uh, realistic saves are simply corrupted. Either that or... I don't know, something happens with my recorder, maybe my hard drive becomes too full and it simply st stops recording. And in those cases, you would miss out on a lot, a lot of things in between, if, if of course I didn't notice. So for the purpose of this, I believe we are going to go with the option to actually save. Now enter your name and distribute your attributes, skill and weapon points. You can click on various elements on the screen to learn how each one of them... Yeah, okay, we already know this. Um, so here's what I believe my goal would be. As you can see, our strength is pretty high, so is our agility, considering the fact that we were mountain children. Uh, we are very hardened, and we are good archers. I believe we should have archery... Let me see. Power draw, that's basically archery. One. Alright. Uh, and the intelligence is pretty low, considering we were never a part of a civilization to learn of these things. <laughs> so here's the deal. For every each and single... Um, or rather, not every each and single, but for every three uh, attribute points you put into one of these attributes, you can increase something on this side. Now, what do I mean? As you can see right here, tracking is on level 2, but you cannot upgrade it yet. As you can see, the base, as you can see right here, the base attribute is intelligence, which means that if I increase the intelligence for 1, alright, oh it's still level 2 because, you know, 6 divided by 3 equals 2, but if I were actually to increase it to 9, you can see that it opens up. Uh, but we're not gonna do that, we're not gonna put everything into its intelligence, sorry. But we are going to put one point into it. Or does that help us at all? It does not open anything. Okay, never mind then. Uh, actually, inventory management... No, we're gonna put one into it so that we can actually put two points into inventory management. My idea is to just go 15 strength, 15 agility, 18 intelligence, and then everything else we get from that point on, we are going to go Charisma. I'm still going to go Charisma 9 right away, so that we can actually have a base... A fine base for leadership and prisoner management, that's always good to have. Um, persuasion... The reason I want to go for 18 Intelligence is because I want really good Persuasion, Inventory Management, and, uh, well, that's basically it from the intelligence tree I believe that I do want to have. Oh, and trainer. Trainer's a pretty good thing when you don't really want to go around and battling the whole time to train your troops. And you basically give your troops, as you can see, a set amount of your own experience that you've gained to your uh, underlings, so to speak, and level them up that way. Agility is always good to have, like, no matter what you do. Uh, strength the same like it doesn't necessarily increase your health that much but you would be amazed at how much one HP can actually make a difference sometimes so we're gonna go 12 strength for starters one more intelligence and I said that we would rush charisma immediately so let's go for that so okay we have leadership too that is awesome we will have prisoner management as well uh inventory management is already a two other than that we are simply going to increase our let's see iron flesh yeah that's good let's just go with iron flesh let's be a bit more beefy and here we are going to enter our name 
Now, I wasn't completely sure what to go with this. Like, I didn't want to simply... Um... Simply... Name myself Kaiser again. I don't want... I, I really don't want this... These playthroughs to literally just be me kissing my own ass or something like that, so to speak. Um... But I did check... And I decided to just go with the name Otto. Now, you might think, what the heck is this? Uh, he was one of the most successful uh, Holy Roman Emperors. So, let's just go with that. Now, um, if anybody has any ideas for any new potential Let's Plays that I might do, like name ideas or anything like that, please leave them in the comments. I will give them serious consideration. Um, at the point of me recording this Let's Play, there really haven't been that many comments to any of my previous videos, or my previous Let's Play of Sid Meier's Pirates, so nothing to actually gain there, so I had to make up my own name, but we will go with this. It's not exactly a Japanese name, but then again, we are a foreigner in a way that came into Japan. So here we're gonna go. You can see that archery is actually our biggest attribute here. Or ra rather, proficiency. This goes up either as you train or simply as you fight, you gain proficiency. We are going to basically just increase some... Yeah, let's just go full on archery. I like that. Alright, here I'm just going to make a face, but this might take a bit, so I will actually cut off right here and come back to you as soon as I am done. Okay, guys, welcome back. Uh, I believe this is what we're gonna go for. Like, I didn't want to really go with one of the uh, typical Japanese uh, uh, looks, considering we're supposed to be a little bit foreign, nor did I really want to go, like, there's a completely anime look here, like, right here, look at it. <laughs> like, you can just simply imagine Kenshin or from, um, Ronin Kenshin, the anime. There we go. Back to this one. Here we go. Th I mean, this looks German enough, I suppose. <laughs> I'm sorry to any German, uh, viewers are they, uh, out there. So let's do that. You hear about Japan, a land torn between rival daimyo battling each other for supremacy, a haven for samurai and ronin, ronin, cutthroats and adventurers, all willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power or glory. In this land which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, you believe you may leave your past behind and start a new life. You feel that you find a, you feel that finally you hold the key of your destiny in your own hands, free to choose as you will, and that whatever course you take, great adventures will await you. Drawn by the stories you heard, drawn by the stories you hear about Japan and its provinces, you. So let's see. Join a caravan to Tsu in Isa province. Join a caravan to Hirosaki in the far north. Join a caravan to Niigata in the Echigo province. Take a ship to Edo in the Kanto region. Take a ship to Sakai in the Kinai region. Or take a ship to Hakata in Kyushu. Now, I usually prefer starting off in Kyushu. Uh, simply because while there are a lot of rebel um, parties there, or rather not rebels, but uh, pirates and such, they're still not as strong as some of the rebels in the, like, heart of the mainland. Now, those are actually strong as hell, and you're gonna see what I mean. Like, they can take a party, you can have an army of a hundred men, if they are not strong enough, uh, or if they're like somewhere mid-strength, there is a very big chance that you lose that army to like 40 of the Kenai Rebels or the Kanto Rebels. So, take a ship to Hakata in Kyushu. You have arrived in Hakata in Chikuzen province, the chief port of northern Kyushu and a gateway to Japan from mainland Asia. You are exhausted by the time you find the inn in Hakata and fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn and are eager to explore your surroundings. You venture out onto the street, which are still deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a sound that stands the hairs of your neck on end. 
the rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard. So here we go, let us see what weapon it actually gave us. I believe that because we chose to be a retainer in the provinces, it actually gave us a... Uh, I believe this is a Wakizashi? I don't think it's a katana, it seems kind of short for that. No, actually it is a katana. There we go. Japanese Major, not knowing which weapon I'm holding. I believe that's the... yeah, that's the merchant. Are you alright? Well... I guess you're alive at any rate. I'm not sure what we can say, that we can say the same for the Ronin. That's one less murderous maniac to trouble our streets, although the gods know he might not be the last. Anyway, maybe you can help me with something. Let's talk more inside. Out there, out here, we don't know who's listening. I don't know why I'm giving this guy this kind of accent, but I'm kind of liking it. The merchant takes you to his house. Once inside, he stands by the door for a while, checking the street, and then finally, convinced you have not been followed, comes near you to speak. No, he does not. I have to go to him. Saburo. Now, let me explain my proposition. I have tried to live in life, my life while ignoring the samurai, even in these turbulent times. I figured that if I kept my head down, none of their plots or wars would affect me. I was wrong. They... They killed my brother. Minamaru. He was a hothead for sure. Maybe he showed disrespect to a ho haughty lordling. I don't know what actually happened, but it doesn't matter to me wh whether he brought it upon himself or not. Nobody should be so exalted that they could kill a brother, son or father just because they weren't groveled to as they wished. This is no way for the rest of us to live. My bro my other brother, Horenobo, Horembo, sorry, tried to investigate the murder, but he's disappeared since. I originally feared the worst, but I've just come across a rumor that says he's still alive, as a captive. So here's what I ask of you. Gather a small party, track down who has taken him, teach them a lesson they won't forget, and get Horenbo home safe. I, in return, you'll earn my eternal gratitude and a large sum of money. What do you say? I like the money. Though I did say we're not gonna lust for power and money, didn't I? Eh. I am interested. You won't be able to do this on yourself, though. If you try and take on a samurai and his retainer single-handedly, you will surely use, lose your head. You must round up a group of volunteers and, fo and form a band. There's always a few boys in the villages around here looking for work that's more interesting than tilling the soil or hauling water. They'll follow you if you pay. So, take this purse of a hundred mon, consider it in adva an advance on your reward, go around to the villages and use the money to hire some help. I'll reckon that ne you need at least five men to take on these scoundrels. God, my tongue got a bit caught there. Very good, sir. I'll go collect some men from around villages. Good. You can find me again in the inn here in Hakata after you've got your group together. Then we'll speak about what we do next. Alright, you have taken your first quest. You may view your quest log by pressing Q at any time in the game. We're gonna be doing that, but not right now. So we press tab and get out of Hakata. Now, see, this is what I was talking about. The original vanilla game like if you can imagine it's basically about this big like you have to go around the map a little bit to actually discover the entire thing but usually you can travel from one one end of the map to the other one in about a day or half or so if i remember correctly like it's been a while since i actually played the vanilla but when you're playing this mod this is the size like it's massive it takes forever to get from one end of the map to the other one. Like, I have not timed it yet, but I believe that I've gone for like seven days or like a whole week and I still didn't make it to the other side. So you'll see what I mean when we take uh, a few quests or something like that. So what do we have here? Looters right at the start. We're not gonna go that way then. You're now viewing the world, the overland map. Left click on the map. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Alright, let's go to Itoshima and get some men just like he ordered. See, I wasn't paying too much attention and I didn't see those four looters actually came all the way to us. This is a robbery, eh? 
I'm giving you one chance to hand over ye everything you got or we'll kill you, understand? I'm not afraid of you. Come at me. Now, the only reason I gave this guy that kind of accent is because of the way that even the text was written. <laughs> so let's go. You have one troops fit for battle against their four. Charge the enemy. Now, can I take these four on my own? Hopefully I do because I don't really want to waste any time being a captive. Where are they? Is that them? Yeah, that's them. Okay. So, we don't really have any armor or anything, but we do have a katana, which is much better than just having a cleaver or something like that. Wow, they're throwing rocks at me, I believe. Yep, yep, they are. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's go. There we go. First one down. Block that. Kill him. Block. Just an overhead. There we go. Usually, if you go for the head, it does more damage. But since we have no strength yet... Yeah, there we go. Okay, we just poked him with that. There we go, so we made it! I like how my hands are actually dri- and the katana as well are actually bloody- Oh, my face as well. Wow! We look like we just- Well, we look like we just killed somebody. <laughs> Brutally killed somebody. Alright, so a rusty comma. We'll just take everything they have. Like, considering we have nothing on our head yet, this will help. It does make us look kind of stupid, but hey. Um, kunai, comma, no, we have a katana, so we don't really need any of that. It's like, maybe we'll take the stones so that we have something to throw at the enemy before they get to us. But we actually got 63 more mon. So let's see, if I remember correctly, in order to recruit volunteers, uh, yeah, it's 10 mon per recruit. So we potentially can recruit six more people thanks to that fight. Now, I'm hoping those looters are not still here. They don't appear to be excellent, so let's... It doesn't help that they're not there because nobody's actually willing to join me. That's that's very nice. Hmm. Chikoshino. Two villagers. Yeah, we'll take them. Wait, did it say collect five men? Okay, so five men isn't enough. We have to collect five men. Meaning, let's head to Kita Kyushu. We're gonna steer clear of those guys, these guys as well. I mean, though we we just saw that we're perfectly capable of taking a few down. Uh, no, wait, I wanted both of those. Thank you. There we go, so we have seven men. Wait, let me actually check something. Options. Uh, damage to player, normal. Damage to friends, normal. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I'm not playing on, like, the easiest mode, which is literally you and your friends get only a quarter of the damage that your uh, enemies sustain. Basically, if you can imagine god mode, they can do almost nothing to you while you just kill everybody. And that's not really the most fun way to play this. Uh, he said we'd meet at the inn, so let's go. Slaver. Merchant. Oh, we don't need you guys yet. Okay. Excellent. You've hired enough men to take on any country samurai, especially if they don't know you're coming. Now, travelers entering Hakata have told us that there is one waiting outside of town, with a small group of retainers. I picked at them myself and I am certain that this one is employed by the same people that, that took Horembo, that... that Hunting him down and defeat hunt him down and defeat him and make him disclose the location of his master. Very well, I will capture this samurai. Now just to explain what these guys are. Slavers, just as it says, like you basically can um, when you capture enemies in fights, you can actually sell them to slavers. And I mean somebody apparently is willing to play, pay ransom for them. Um and you actually get quite a lot of money in some cases, depending on what the rank of the soldier actually is. Uh, so far we've only killed our enemies, not really knocked them out, so we don't really know. I mean, you guys probably don't really know what it looks like to ransom someone. Who are you? Why are you talking to me? I've been looking for you. 
Tell me who your lord is and where he lives and I will let you go. Are you serious? You just told me that you wanted to die. We shall see who dies today. You've encountered a samurai traveling party. You have seven troops fit for battle against their four. So let's charge the enemy. Okay. Another thing I'll do is actually tell everyone to stay here because I'm kind of curious. Are they going to come to us? They are. And I'm pretty sure that even these guys, or at least I hope, they have stones or stuff to actually throw at them as well. And I do as well. Um, do I? Hello? Yeah, I do, I do. Okay. I accidentally scrolled down, which basically uh, puts your sword away. Yeah. Uh, learn where harm, but yeah. God, okay, no, this is taking forever. Let's just go. Or maybe tell them to follow me for now. I really hope you guys can actually see the map. I'm hoping it's not too dark. Like, if it is, I'll actually increase the brightness. I don't know right now yet, though. Okay, so they have arrows. Not good. Because, yeah, for those of you that might actually be, um... Who might actually know what the vanilla for Mountain Blade w looks like. Basically, in the vanilla, you can have shields. Historically, Samurai did not have shields. And so, nor will you in this game. So basically, all of your troops are shieldless and so are you. So, actually trying to dodge the arrows and getting good enough armor to survive arrow shots and such is actually a very important thing here. Alright, so we got all of them. And actually didn't lose a single one of our troops, which is interesting, considering they actually did have actual weapons and not just commas. Uh, battle 1, we gained one renown. Very nice. How dare you! I am a key vassal of Lord Tachibana! Uh, just saying, Lord Tachibana is the Lord of Hakata. The letters you carry on in your baggage tell me who you really work for, or one of my men recognized your face and told me who your real lord is. I don't think he has a real lord though, so let's just bullshit our way into this. So I guess that means you don't need me alive anymore. Very well, I am not afraid to die. But know this, you are a fool if you think your band of rabble can assault our mansion in Chikushino. Practice Yumi, that is great. We'll actually just take that. We'll also take some additional armor for our hands. And we just leveled up. Let me see right here. Okay, so, like I said, the first thing I want to do is actually level up my charisma to level 9 so that we have some leadership and prisoner management. Uh, and after that, work our way from the top. Uh, so what do we do with this point? I believe we'll just go for Iron Flesh, make ourselves even beefier. Uh, archery, because right now we're actually fighting with two-handed weapons, so we're automatically gaining proficiency. Archery, not yet. Uh, okay, so the goal is to attack the Kidnapper's Mansion right there. But I do believe that we should get some additional men before we actually try that. So on that note... I believe I will actually make a cut right here, and we will come back next time. I'll just go to these uh, nearby villages and recruit some more men to make the raid on the Kidnapper's Mansion easier. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Until next time, guys, Ad Gloriam.